Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So this week we're going to take a look at a different aspect of authorization on the blockchain that allows attackers to perform man-in-the-middle attacks based on the difference between tx.origin and message.sender checks. So open up your browser and go to remix.ethereum.org. And if you're not coming from the blog, please go back to the blog, read the information up till this example in order to learn what we're talking about or you're going to have no clue what we're doing as the learning takes place in the blog and the examples take place in the walkthrough videos. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new file and we'll call this hello world tx dot soul. In this smart contract file we're going to create two functions. The first function is going to return the tx.origin address and the second function is going to return the message.sender address of whoever calls this contract. That way we can illustrate the differences and you'll understand why we can create a man-in-the-middle attack on the blockchain using a malicious smart contract rather than confuse the matter with a more complicated example. So let's start out with our Pragma Solidity line. and then we'll create a contract. And in here we're gonna create two functions. So the first function is gonna be return tx address. It's gonna be public and it will return an address. Then we'll create an address variable. And it will return the tx.origin. So now what we're gonna do is just copy paste this because the other function is going to be basically the same thing except that it's going to return a message.sender. So let's just change this TX here to MSG and we'll say message.sender. And you're already familiar with message.sender as we've been using it throughout this whole course showing you that the message.sender is a person who actually called this contract. Now what we need to do is create a smart contract that calls these functions so we can see the difference between message.sender and tx.origin. In reality, this would be our malicious contract that we're phishing a user with. But in our case, it's just gonna be two simple functions that call these functions to show the difference. So let's create a new file and we're gonna call it call underscore hello dot soul and all I'm going to do is paste in some code and explain it to you because it's nothing you haven't seen before and it should be very very straightforward but I'll go through the code anyway so we have an interface that we set up kind of like with our reentrancy attack where all we do is we copy paste the function definitions from hello so this function definition and this one and we replace public with external. So now we have our target interface and we can use that target interface to link it up with the address in the blockchain. So we need to add the address here and then we will call it hello interface equals target interface of the address. So let's actually deploy hello world right now and paste that address in. So we're gonna compile it and then we're gonna deploy it and we're gonna copy that address and we're gonna paste it into our calling contract. So paste in here, hit Control S. So we save it and then we have now hello interface equals our target interface pointed at this address on the blockchain so we can access these functions with the target interface. Now we have two functions that correspond with the two functions in our hello world TX called my TX and my MSG. And all we're gonna do is use our target interface to call the corresponding function 
which will return the address. Now we're using a contract to call another contract. So we're gonna see the difference between that and the output. So let's deploy this. And what we're gonna first do is call my MSG. And what my MSG is gonna do is it's going to call the other contract from this contract. So we should get back an address of 0702 because that's our address. So let's check the output down here. And you will see the decoded output here comes from the address 702, which matches our contract address. But if we now call with tx.origin and we take a look at it, this is not the case anymore. So it returns with 0 x73a that's not our calling contract address what that actually is is the user who called this contract and then it got passed through like proxied to the target contract so that would actually be our account address up here so the whole point of that is you could create a malicious smart contract that convinces a user to take an action and when they actually take that action, it passes through to the contract that maybe they only have authorization on. For example, with the authorization chapter, you had a kill function. Like maybe we wanted to kill that contract, but we didn't have authorization to do it. So we could create a contract or convince a user to make a transaction through our smart contract that then passes on their credentials into the other contract to kill it if the check was using tx.origin instead of message.sender. So that's where the vulnerability lies. The vulnerability lies right here on this line where we're actually using message.sender or tx.origin. So if we do something like owner equals equals tx.origin, we now have a vulnerability because it's actually checking the wrong thing. It's not checking who called it, it's checking the original account, regardless if it was passed through. So hopefully that makes sense. This was just a simple example. Please type this out and actually go through it and make sure you understand the concept because in the next video, we're gonna take a more complex example and use it to bypass checks. So hopefully you learned something today. If you did, please like the video and share it out on your social media. Really helps out a lot. And I'll catch you in the next video where we look at this a little bit deeper and we make the understanding a little bit better.